Yo, what's up guys? So moving on with the instantaneous rate of change, we're gonna be talking now about the centered interval method to find the instantaneous rate of change. Another expression for it is the squeeze method. So let's say that we have a function and we have to find the instantaneous rate of change at one point. So let's say it's x is equal to a. So what have we done so far? Well, before what we were doing is we were finding the average rate of change on this preceding interval. So between x is equal to a and x is equal to a minus h where h is just some kind of small number. So this here was the preceding interval. And then we found the average rate of change between the following interval, which was x between x is equal to a and x is equal to a plus h. So this here is the following interval. So we would find these two average rate of changes and then average them out and then we would get an approximate instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to a. So that was called the preceding and following interval method. Well, the centered interval method, instead of taking the two average rate of changes and then uh, averaging them out, what the centered interval method does is it just takes the average rate of change between these two intervals. So this here is called the centered interval. So you would just take the average rate of change between these two points some point that is to the left of x is equal to a and some point that is to the right of it with equal distances, these h's being the same, and you would just find the average rate of change once in this centered interval. So for example, if we have a function x squared minus 3x, what is the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to 5? So we have to find the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to 5. So if we use the centered interval method, what we would do is we would pick an x value that's less than 5 but close to it. So let's pick an h value of 0.1. So 5 minus 0.1 would be 4.9. And then we pick another x point that's greater than 5 that has the same difference h. So 5 plus 0.1 which would be 5.1. And now all we do is we find the average rate of change between these two points. So finding the average rate of change between these two points, just like we've been doing before, we have to find the y values at 4.9 and x equals 5.1. So plugging those in into the function, we get 9.31 and 10.71. So this is like our x1, y1, x2, y2. And then same thing, finding average rate of change, same formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 because we have two points. Doing all that, we get seven. So seven is the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to five. Now remember, when using centered interval method, it's still only an approximation. We can't be fully sure that the instantaneous rate of change that we get is going to be correct. In this case, seven is the actual instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to five. But for other questions, you have to say, when you use this method and you get the instantaneous rate of change at the end, that's still an approximation. You're not fully sure whether it's the exact uh, instantaneous rate of change. The method that we're going to do next, which is using the difference quotient, we're going to be able to find exactly what the instantaneous rate of change is.